Can you photograph distant galaxies with just a small 3-inch refractor telescope? Let's find out. It's been a while since I made a video like this out in the garden doing some astrophotography. I mean, we moved here five months ago and this is the first time that I've made one of these videos. Let me know in the comments down below if you like these videos because they're probably my favorite type of video to make but i kind of get the feeling that they get a bit samey after a while especially if it's just me using the same equipment that i use every time out in the garden there's not very much difference to show each time so i don't make them very often but i do enjoy making them the most so let me know in the comments down below if you like this type of video and i will start making more of them it's been a hell of a week so far this is the third clear night this week and we're due to get another i think at least three clear nights after this as well so absolutely spoiled at the minute we are of course at the start of galaxy season now so already this week i've imaged m81 and m82 and i also had a night on the leo triplet as well i've not processed those images yet but when i do you'll if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you'll see me posting those images on there. And I'm trying a new filter now. I've bought the Optolong L Pro filter, which is a filter that will be familiar to most people that have watched this channel before. But um, it's first for me. I've used it for the past two nights. I'm going to use it again tonight. So tonight I'm hoping to image M106, which is a spiral galaxy in the constellation Canis Venatasi. I really hope I've pronounced that right. I've practiced that about 20 times, so apologies if I got that completely wrong. I did have to Google it. It's 23 million light years away from Earth, and it's also 67 million light years across, which makes it bigger than our own Milky Way galaxy, which I think is 52 million light years across off the top of my head. I don't know, I'd have to go and get my tape measure to check that one out. It also contains 400 billion stars, and with my field of view, I should be able to get several other galaxies in the frame as well. I'm not sure how well they'll turn out or how fuzzy they'll be, but I like to be able to get multiple things in the same field of view, so that's exciting. My, th my three inch refractor is not a particularly great scope for imaging galaxies, but with the crop factor of the ZW0533, it should mean that it looks reasonable in the field of view, and hopefully I can make a good image to show you at the end of this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking my flat frames now, so I will check back in with you once it's finally dark. All right, so the situation is I have polar aligned, I've focused, I've got my tracking turned on and I'm about to slew to my target which for tonight is M106. I'm not sure if I was plate solving the last time I did an astro vlog like this um, but the word game changer gets used an awful lot these days but genuinely um, I think that plate solving is probably the biggest difference you can make to your astrophotography just for ease of use, I would say. It just makes things so much easier. I don't have to mess around with the star alignment or use the hand controller or anything like that. I, once I'm polar aligned, I can be inside and on the laptop and getting everything working from here. And although it is nice to be outside with the equipment, I just find that in terms of getting everything going, this is generally much, much easier. So I'm gonna start my first capture now. And I'm going to do a tutorial about how to plate solve using ECOS because a few people have asked me to do that. And I find it's actually really quite simple once you've got it set up. Uh, but I will do a video about that, which hopefully some people will find useful. But essentially, I've slewed to the target and I've hit capture and solve. So that's now taken a short picture and that is analyzed in a database. And if the target is in the field of view, then uh, in the center of the field of view, I should say, then perfect. If it's not, then the mount will make small adjustments until it is within a certain error. So you can see I'm within two arc seconds of that being right in the center of the frame, which is absolutely perfect. So we can now live in comfort that M106 is right in the middle of the frame. So when I take that first capture, I'm gonna do three minute subs tonight. We know that the galaxy will be in the center of the frame. So now that I'm on target, you can start doing a couple of test exposures. I'm cooling the camera down to minus 10 tonight, but I won't force that temperature um, while I'm just doing test shots. So I want to do 
a three minute exposure, but actually as it's just a test shot, I'll just do a 60 second exposure just to see how that looks. And those settings are all fine. So I will go ahead and hit okay on that. And while that's taking, I will get PhD2 set up so I can start guiding. I've already done a tutorial on PhD2. So if you need to know how to do auto guiding, then I will leave a link to that particular video in the description down below. All right, that 60 second exposure has finished. Um, you can hopefully in the video just about make out the galaxy in the field of view there. It is quite small, but I was expecting that and um, we'll see what we get out of it. I, my gear isn't designed to take images of galaxies. It's a small wide field refractor, but I just enjoy doing it. So I'm going to do it anyway. And if I get a half decent image at the end of it, then all the better for it. So let me get rid of that. 180 second exposures and I'll just do 150 of them. I know that I'll need to do a meridian flip about half past midnight tonight. And I always give a delay of five seconds just so that the mounts had a little bit of time to settle after dithering. While I'm just waiting for PhD2 to finish doing its calibration, um, we recently passed 10,000 subscribers on this channel. I think it was about, I don't know, five, six weeks ago or something like that. And I don't think I said publicly a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel so far. I really do appreciate it. And if you could give this video a like, um, because that genuinely does help out the channel, it helps the video spread to more people and therefore more people will find this channel and hopefully subscribe and things like that so if you could hit the like button that would be great thank you so phd2 is um just finishing its calibration i'm going to go ahead and tick the box to say that i want to force the temperature so that i know that all my light frames will be minus 10 if it's just 0.1 of a degree off it will take an image um anyway but 0.1 isn't going to make any difference so my settings for tonight minus 10 degrees c on the camera three minute exposures. I don't generally count how many exposures I need to do for my session. I just throw in a randomly high number that I know I'm not going to meet. And then when I get up in the night to tear down the rig, I just hit stop. Um, I don't know if other people do that. <laughs> Maybe other people work out how many they need to do and do it a bit more sophisticated than I do, but I don't bother with that. As I said, I'm going to do a five second delay, gain 120, offset 30, and my file settings will save with the target number M106 in that folder there. So we can see that guiding has started. So now that my guiding is going and I've got all my settings dialed in there, Astro Dark doesn't start for another sort of half an hour yet, but just so that I've got some subs rolling in, I can see how they look. I'm gonna start now. I'm actually just gonna whack that up to 250, why not? hit start and there we go that's great and what i can do in here under the mount control in eq mod is automate my meridian flip so i can have it so that if it goes a certain point past the meridian it will automatically do a meridian flip i just have it set to zero so basically as soon as i've gone past the meridian and i've finished taking an image the mount will do an automatic meridian flip and it's really helpful that it does the countdown for when that flip is going to happen so I can set my alarm and wake up and watch the mount. So while I'm quite happy to let the mount do the meridian flip itself, I do just go and stand at the side of it just to make sure that there aren't any snagging cables or anything like that. So we can see that is my first three minute exposure rolled in. You can see the galaxy is really small in the field of view, but actually you can see that there's, I think that's probably another galaxy there and there's another smattering of galaxies down here. Um, so I, I'm really pleased to see how this image is going to turn out at the end. It's not going to be the next A-pod or anything like that. I'm not going for any sort of standard here. If I can get a half decent image, you know, if people can make out that there's a galaxy in the center of this picture and maybe even recognize that it's M106, then I'll be absolutely over the moon. So I am going to leave this running for as long as possible tonight, probably until around four o'clock this morning, and hopefully have a half decent image to share with you at the end of this video, and maybe even share my two images from the previous night's imaging as well, if I'm able to salvage anything from those nights as well. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Nick, and you've been watching Astro Exploring, and I'll see you in the next video.